I've got to be upfront and honest from the outset with this one in that Law is not my baby. A little bit like the origins for The Border and The Morgan. Um, this was originally conceived by our fabulous artist, Sean Spate. When I mapped out possible episodes for the channel, there were all sorts of horror and sci-fi tropes in there. We've got a vampiric character who is going to start appearing in a recurring role moving forward on the Axis side of things. There's a background story set out for Lucius, which is distinctly more scientific in origin as opposed to supernatural. We had time portals, kaiju attacks, that's going to be fun, uh, clockwork soldiers. Didn't have any Norse gods. So when Sean came up with this idea... It was so good that I had, to, I had to down tools and then expand on it. His original vision was to have uh, an old man somewhere in Scandinavia fighting the Germans or assisting the Allies. And then at the end of the story, it's unmasked that it's Odin, who's the old man. In a way, despite having been a bit of a Marvel fan in the past, I'm, I'm quite angry at Marvel for aggressively acquiring uh, and pushing their version of Norse mythology because you can't really Google anything to do with that now without your feed filling it with pictures of, of Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston. As a result, I didn't really feel I could look to incorporate Thor or Loki into the story. But, you know, Odin, he's the all-father, he's the Mac Daddy. He, he's a strong enough character to be a standalone. So if I was going to use him, just as Sean had wanted me to, I needed to find an antagonist for him. Now, I'm not that imaginative, so in essence that was just a couple of Google searches for Enemies of Odin, which is where I found out about Fenrir. So along with Hela, Fenrir was one of Loki's children, uh, god of wolves, and it was prophesied that he would be the one who would eventually kill Odin, uh, at the climax of the Ragnarok cycle. The fact that he's a wolf god also made me think that we could come up with, with Sean with a great look for him. You know, this this character who in his human form was a bit rough and ready, a bit dirty and bearded. And that would play off nicely against Odin, who would have a more statesmanlike appearance, uh, an old man with the eye patch retained from legend. Uh, as a reference point to identify him. From what I've read, uh, I've got a great love of Norway and the role it played in World War II. There's a really rich history up there for, for monsters uh, and legends, and you tie them in with the cat and mouse games during the war that were played with the Allied agents and the occupation forces, and you've got fertile ground for good stories there. I'd already referenced the Battle of Narvik, in the origin story for, for Lieutenant Sidney Shepard in Mendacious. And there's two other plots set out in Norway moving forward, both of which are based around cryptids during the war. So I'd sat down with what Sean had come up with and I was trying to expand on it into an idea of this heavenly struggle with humans caught in the middle, with Fenrir being the, the upstart god allying himself with the Germans in an attempt to, to harm Odin's prestige, but the Allfather frustrating him. So now I just needed something for him to fight over. Now, Route 1 would likely have been to go down the lines of atomic energy uh, and the Allied efforts to try and deny the Germans from getting it, maybe have Odin somehow prevent the Germans from acquiring it. But I'd seen that done already, and I can't for the life of me remember what it was called, but there was a comic book and it was about mer people and had them sinking a real-life ferry transporting cold water for the Germans. So I thought, it's been done, we need something else. And I was drawn to the story of the Tirpitz. The struggle to sink the Tirpitz could fill a whole episode, which I might do at some point. Um, so I'm going to touch on parts of it for this, which was mainly the defences that were deployed around her. Hitler had promised his admirals there'd be another decade of production before he started the war, but Hitler being Hitler 
declared war 10 years early, so the German Navy was missing most of its planned battle fleet. The ones they did have didn't fare that well. The Graf Spee was scuttled in Uruguay in 1939 when it was trapped by the Royal Navy. The Blucher was sunk by torpedoes fired from a fort during the invasion of Norway the following year. That's a great story. I'm almost certainly going to cover that in a video. Uh, and then a year after that, the Bismarck was famously stalked and sunk by the Royal Navy. So three years, three battleships lost. Uh, and the other thing that was lost was Hitler's sense of humour. Uh, and he basically relegated his surface fleet to very limited tasks and instead relied on the U-boat fleet and Dönitz for any naval-based activity. He believed that deploying them in ports meant that it would bottle up Royal Navy resources and RAF resources. Tirpitz was the Bismarck's sister ship, commissioned in 1941, but in 1942 she was pretty much penned up in a fjord in Norway as a deterrent against an Allied invasion that was never going to happen uh, for the rest of the war. As time went on, she was subjected to more and more Allied air attacks, so the defences around her were scaled up. She was moved to a location out of range of the bombers at that time. They built gun emplacements in the fjord around her. Uh, at one point, they moored her next to a cliff to limit that angle of approach. Uh, they tried to use foliage to cover her. And they built a series of artificial foggers into the fjord around the ship. These involved mixing water and chlorosulfuric acid, which would then produce a thick fog that made the ship difficult to hit from above. As the war went on, there was less and less fuel available, so like most German surface ships, the Tirpitz just became ineffective as a weapon. She was subjected to 26 separate attacks from land-based planes, carrier-based planes, and a very famous attack involving midget submarines. Eventually, the Royal Air Force sunk the Tirpitz using Torboy bombs, which were the experimental bunker busters of their day. The capsized wreck would take 11 years for a company to fully dismantle and remove, uh, and traces of the, the attack and the defences around the ship can still be found today. There's numerous craters from the Torboys, uh, gun emplacement foundations, and even the local flora and fauna, there's still traces of the damage that was done by the artificial fog in the stuff that's there today. In terms of stories based around deities, I think at this point, this will probably be the only one. We're not going to have a, a story arc involving the gods fighting in humanity. If I can come up with something or if somebody sends me a suggestion that's strong enough to revisit it, I'd consider it. But I do try and avoid being drawn into an overarching main narrative or plot. These stories are designed so that all of them can be sort of reviewed casually in isolation. Where there are recurring characters, it's not really to tie the stories together. That's more to reflect the madness of World War II and the fact that it had spread out to every corner of the globe. And so the conflict is being pushed into the backyard of these monsters and these cryptids and entities. And that's why people are encountering them rather than anything else. Um, I've been asked on a couple of occasions now if there's going to be a book at all to accompany the videos. That is something I would love to do, um, kind of around the format of a third party and some sterile analysis of the cases, throwing in maps and diagrams, um, witness testimony. There's also been suggestions for some sort of Lucius-based product just with the man himself and following his murderous antics all the way down through history. I do think we need to raise the profile and get a fair few more subscribers before we go down that avenue. That said, who knows? I never thought I'd have 16,500 subscribers 18 months into this, which just goes to show anything's possible.